Thank you, Celine. Actually, I'll start talking as these guys are getting on stage. Um, so we have a very interesting next 30 minutes or so. Um, this is going to be an exciting session. Um, we're going to hear from Darnell Holloway, who is head of business outreach for Yelp. Um, and we also have on stage, you'll notice, some real life SMBs um, from here in the Austin area. We have Ann, Wade, and Matt. Um, we'll get into those introductions in just a minute. Um, but first off, a, a note about Yelp. Um, you know, as an analyst in the space, I'm always watching Yelp. And, um, you know, they're growing a lot. They're continually posting strong quarterly earnings. Um, they're getting into mobile to a great degree. Um, you know, 59% of searches on Yelp are happening um, on their mobile app. 40% uh, of ads are posted on mobile. This isn't necessarily a mobile centric session, but just a few examples of all the interesting things they're doing. They're continuing to acquire companies and partner with companies to bring in more functionality, uh, such as, you know, appointment scheduling and table reservations and food delivery and all of these other things that kind of get to, you know, some of the themes we've been going over and especially earlier today about just kind of a broader one stop shop offering for the small business that isn't just advertising, but also helping out in a lot of operational aspects and really being locked in and kind of a deeper relationship um, that, that has higher attention um, and, and other kind of benefits. Um, so with that, I'll actually turn it over to Darnell. He's going to have a lot to say and then we will go from there uh, to kind of interview some of these real life small businesses and seeing what they're doing and thinking um, and how they're using Yelp and even other tools in, in the local space. Um, so please join me in welcoming Darnell. All right. Thank you for having us here and I promise not to bore you to death with PowerPoint slides for too long uh, before we turn it over to our real stars of the show here. But I do want to go over a few things with folks here and um, do we have the slides up on the screen? There we go. There you go. All right. So first, just want to talk a little bit at kind of a, a high level on what we're doing over at Yelp and at its core our mission is this, to connect people with great local businesses and I think it's actually a perfect segue from the last session. Hunter uh, mentioned that the Yellow Pages was the best source of leads years back. It was the most targeted audience. It was pretty much the main uh, guide that consumers were using to find local businesses and you know, now if you take a look here, we're pretty well positioned in this space. We feel that we're sort of leading in disruption and we are one of the only platforms that is 100% dedicated to connecting consumers with businesses out there. And um, you know, this is a common user case here. We see a lot of consumers starting their search on uh, the major search engines like Google, Bing, Yahoo and a big percentage of our traffic is still coming from these search engines, 45% in fact on a monthly basis as of Q2 we hit about 108 million monthly unique visitors coming to the desktop site to look up information on local businesses and that's because we've got 42 million reviews and counting a lot of rich great local content to help them make a buying decision. Now mobile is actually uh, another area of interest. We've got another 10.4 million people using Yelp's app for mobile devices. Um, also quick correction there Mike. So 45% of all searches are coming from the mobile app. That 59% number includes the mobile web as well. So just important to point that out. Um, but we find that folks on mobile uh, have a stronger intent to purchase. In fact every second now a call is being generated to a local business or GPS directions are being mapped out to a local business through one of our apps. But what makes Yelp different? And so I want to spend a little bit of time talking about this. And um, since day one, our focus has really been to build a strong offline component to go along with the online component. And so we have community managers in every city, every major metro uh, that we have a presence in. And their goal is really to develop a thriving offline community of Yelpers or reviewers who are enthusiastic about regularly sharing their experiences with local businesses. And so we always like to say that Yelp is not a drive by review site. In fact, we take a very aggressive stance when it comes to quality control on Yelp. Um, just a few months ago, I sat down with Jeremy Salpman, our co-founder and CEO. I just sort of asked him about uh, his philosophy on this and he told me that it wasn't long after our initial launch that we saw our first obviously fake review pop up on the site. And the reason for that is because the mentality at the time with a lot of folks in the business community was you simply go online and you leave some testimonials for yourself and then you leave some negative reviews for your competitor and that's really how you win in the online space. So with that in mind, we wanted to make sure that we were developing a platform that was actually useful for consumers and so we've taken a few steps uh, to achieve that. One thing is we do have a review filter on the site. Um, which uh, I've definitely talked about with these folks here. Um, and uh, the review filter is 
simply a computer algorithm that looks at a wide range of information associated with every Yelp user and every reviewer on the site. And it uses the data available to it to try to figure out if reviews are shills, if they're fakes. Um, it also tries to tease out biased reviews as well. Um, we've realized that in addition to sort of the uh, fake and show reviews. There are certainly other reviews out there that simply aren't as useful for consumers. I'll give you a great example. I was at an automotive conference a few months back in Orlando and a guy raised his hand and he said, hey, you know, I don't think Yelp's review filter is working quite right. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, every single positive review that I've gotten has been filtered out and it's from legitimate people. And I said, well, are you doing anything inorganic to boost your rating? And he said, well, I set up a laptop on my showroom floor and so after someone buys a car from me I just have them go create a Yelp profile and leave a five star review for my business. And so you can imagine what that kind of activity looks like on the back end uh, if all of a sudden you have uh, 50 new profiles created at one IP address all leaving glowing reviews for a business. And so these are all issues that we're very well aware of and things that we uh, take into account when we're going to highlight certain reviews on the site. And it's one of the reasons why we think we're so successful because if you create an ecosystem where consumers know that they can trust the content uh, being put before them, then it's really a win-win for everyone, which is a good segue into uh, these two recent studies that have come out uh, looking at the impact of Yelp for businesses. And so uh, over here we have a study that was done by Nielsen and uh, what they found was that 89% of users on Yelp make a purchase at a local business within a week of finding a business. A lot of those people do that within a matter of days actually. And another study done by Boston Consulting Group looked at the financial impact of Yelp on businesses and what they found was that by engaging with Yelp, businesses on average are seeing about an $8,000 increase in annualized revenue just by optimizing their page, engaging with Yelp users by responding to reviews and then folks that choose to advertise are seeing an av average increase of about $23,000 in annualized revenue. And Along those lines, we also want to make sure that we're helping business owners connect the dots and close the loop with potential customers. So we do give uh, people the opportunity to track traffic to their page, uh, also track customer leads. Uh, these are valuable data points for businesses to really get an understanding of who's checking into their business, who's calling their business, clicking through their website, so on and so forth. And so with that, I think it's important to just take a look at, uh, on a granular level, the numbers for some of the folks that we have sitting up here on stage. And uh, first we've got Ann Webb from Ann Webb Skin Clinic in, uh, Institute here in Austin. And uh, it's got some pretty incredible numbers. In the last 12 months, she's had 12,496 uh, user views on Yelp, 60% of that coming from Yelp.com, 40% from mobile. Uh, 4,498 customer leads, so over 3,500 people clicked through to her website, 376 calls from the mobile app. 273 folks mapped out directions, 37 check-ins, 60 bookmarks, 164 deals sold. Next up we've got Matt here from Peace Frog Carpet and Tile Cleaning. Uh, in the last 12 months he's had 6,733 people find his business on Yelp, 76% from Yelp.com, 24% from Yelp Mobile, which is interesting because he is actually a service-based business where he is actually going out to people's homes, but you've still got people finding him on mobile. Um, and then if you take a look at his customer leads in the last 12 months as well, some very healthy numbers there. Uh, 2,500 people, over 2,500 people clicking through to the website. Another 209 calls from mobile. And then last but not least, we've got Wade Lombard here in the middle from Square Cal Movers. In the last 12 months he's had over 25,451 user views on Yelp. 76% from Yelp.com, 24% from mobile. and uh, 9,669 customer leads in the last 12 months. So uh, we'll definitely want to uh, dive into some of these numbers with these folks here. And I think a good starting point would be for us to uh, just have you go down the row, say a little bit about yourself. And I think the first uh, thing that would be interesting to talk about is if you could just share a little bit about what your philosophy is on getting the word out about your business. Sure. Okay. Well, um, my name is Ann Webb. I've been in Austin about 10 years. That's when my business started. Um, from the beginning, I believed in local, and I've used local like you can't imagine. A lot of the things that Robin and Hunter said resonated with me today and made me proud. Um, one thing I've, I forget, because we've been doing it so long, is that often when every single time I have been asked to donate an item for a silent auction or a charity or a cheerleading event, not only do I donate a handful of items, 
but I also send over a package of gift certificates for all of the people that have volunteered their time at the events. And it's those, and it shocks them because they're like, well, no one ever thinks of us. We're just there volunteering our time as well. So I've really tried to dig really deep into this community and into local and, um, and make it be a part of our business. From the start, I've always believed in investing my money in people, not paper. Paper's so flat, it goes away so fast. Um, and touching someone on an individual basis each day. When Yelp came to me, I think I got involved because I was more afraid than anything else. Because I watched so many people get in trouble on Yelp and it really have a negative impact on their business. So from day one, when I decided to get involved, I made sure I understood what it meant. Um, and Yelp doubled my business in its first year. So we were very proud of that, but we do have a system of how we deal with it, and I don't want to take away any of the esteem from the other guys, so we'll, we'll I'll get move to that on. In just a second. Yes. Thank you. Hey guys, Wade Lombard uh, with uh, Square Cow Movers. I own a moving company. Um, so five years ago, I left a desk job uh, along with my business partner to start a moving company, having never moved furniture before. So uh, it's pretty interesting. It was 2008, which was a fantastic time to start a small business directly tied to housing. Uh, so it was, uh, it was good times. Um, but we got started, uh, honestly, um, moved everything ourselves the first 12 to 18 months uh, after buying two trucks. Uh, fast forward to f uh, our fifth year now, uh, we just bought our 16th truck, have about 60 guys on staff, been very, very pleased with our growth. Um, I think a lot of our growth has been attributed to, um, we're just extremely client focused. And what we train our people to understand is if you're looking at the moving experience and that's within the parentheses, the first parentheses is perhaps the first time someone calls our office and then the last parentheses is the last items coming off the truck. How can we improve that experience from start to finish? And so that's really what we focused on. We've always said if we take care of the client, the bottom line will take care of itself and it certainly has. And uh, that's been uh, our experience here in the last uh, few years. Hi, my name is Matt Hagabush, and I'm the owner of Peace Frog Carpet and Tile Cleaning. And um, we've just been in business for about two and a half years. Um, I did carpet cleaning when I was a, a young guy and moved to the Austin area, and I couldn't find work. And so I worked for somebody else for a short while and thought that I could do it, and um, got a, a carpet cleaning van in 2010. And, um, created Peace Frog in 2011. Um, I like, we've grown now to, to four vans and I employ six people. Um, the growth has been phenomenal. Um, how I got started in, in my, my business is I offered free carpet cleaning. Um, so for the first six or so months until I had any kind of online presence at all, I was telemarketing and offering one free room and, and getting five of your, your friends. It was a really uh, hardcore campaign to get the word out. And then once I got established on, on Yelp, uh, Yelp has become my boss. Uh, Yelp keeps me honest. It makes, whenever I get an alert that I have a new review on Yelp, I've actually pulled over and stopped and pull out my, my phone because I want to make sure that we're given outstanding service. So um, anyway, that's my first spiel. All right. Well, so, um, Ann, let's start with you. Outside of, of Yelp, what other types of digital marketing are you currently doing, if any? Um, um, we do a lot of marketing with Living Social. We've been incredibly successful by studying other businesses that have had a lot of trouble with that media. It's, it's been great for us. Um, in terms of we also, because we're not only a medical clinic, but we're also a school, we have, I feel like, maximized every free spot that Craigslist gives to us. Craigslist, that's always a hard word for me. Um, and we use that media quite a bit to get community awareness going and so forth. And I think that's probably been my strongest ones. My, where I focus my attention is Yelp, Living Social, Craigslist. Got it. Wait, yeah, and I'll add a question to that. Um, could you talk also just briefly, and if the rest of you can as you go down the line, some of the things that you might have spent money on in the past that you no longer do? I, I felt like 
surprisingly, when I, so I also own a skincare line that was launched in Whole Foods about seven years ago, and that line went global, um, so it's probably in about 6,000 accounts now. And I was shocked to have like a line that was in the top 10 in the whole nation, and only two or three people would buy it on Amazon. I'm like, I thought Amazon was the biggest place in the world. Why isn't everybody going there to buy our line? I really struggled figuring out how to sell products online, believe it or not. So whatever that's worth, I apologize if Amazon's in the, in the group. But, They're here. So. They're waiting outside for you when we're done. Um, just kidding. I'm sorry. Wait, go ahead. But it is. It's good feedback. You know, we were growing in, you know, growing in communities, not only local, but growing nationwide. And I couldn't get anybody to buy the stuff online. Now, in their defense, in my own website where I know tons of people are going every day, they don't buy it off of my website either. So maybe, you know, <laughs> so maybe there's something I'm doing wrong there. Uh, for me, I'll talk about Austin for just a second. So let's say you've lopped off uh, Yelp, uh, Angie's List, and uh, the biggest chunk, which is our SEO work. Um, you just probably took about 90 to 95 percent of our total advertising dollars right there. So um, anything that would be printed by a machine uh, is, uh, is laughable in Austin. Um, it's just not going to work here in my opinion. Uh, the only place that we do anything print in Austin is in Sun City, uh, which is north and which is a retirement community. Uh, we're in their directory and they love us there uh, because they still flip pages and uh, they will call us and I'll say, how did you find us? And they'll say, in the uh, phone directory. And I will, they'll be like, that's awesome. So in Austin, that's the case. In Houston, where I have a smaller branch that we started two years ago, uh, totally different ball game, guys. Um, almost none of that works uh, in Houston. It's much, much more uh, community driven. We actually started something in, in Houston called a box drop, where we'll send our employees out with a bunch of small empty boxes, moving boxes. We'll throw a letter on it, and it's stapled to the front that simply says, hey, we saw a for sale sign in your yard. We'd love to serve you. Here's a free box on us. If, when you get the chance to move, we hope you just pick up the phone and give us a call. Um, okay. That's directly going. They just look for, for sale signs and we just drop a box. We don't knock on their door. We don't solicit them. We don't, we're not intrusive at all. But it's amazing because these people are not going to throw away a perfectly good box, right? Because they're about to move. So they'll stick that box in their laundry room or somewhere else and that letter is going to be on there for three months while they're trying to sell their house. They're going to walk past it and they're going to see my logo every time. And so the box drop in Houston has been tremendous for us but it's just totally different from Austin. And so what we're finding as we branch out is what works here is just not what's going to work everywhere. So we're trying to learn all the nuances uh, from place to place. Yeah, for, for me, um, I'm still learning the ins and outs of SEO. Um, my whole advertising is simply um, advertising on Yelp. Um, Angie's List wore me down, so I, I pay them. And um, every customer that we go to, I give them a, a Peace Frog mug. And so our, our, our logo and our name is on that. And um, so far that's working really, really well. Um, possibly I got lucky when I started of not having a large pool of money to, to come from because I think that a lot of small businesses will uh, go after a lot of poor advertising from the very start and they'll just get broke. And so I didn't do that. And every time that I'm approached for print advertising especially, I researched that really, really well. Um, a community impact, I looked at that yesterday really, really in deep detail to figure out if that was worth spending um, our money on. And, and it's print for a full page ad. I was quoted $2,600 a month. And you know, I, I'm not going to do it. What I, we're doing now works well. And you know, I think that's a, a, a good segue, and anyone can answer this question, but how do you all figure out where you're going to spend your advertising dollars? What is really going to incentivize you to pull out your wallet? Um, well, one of the things I did in Austin when I first got here 10 years ago is I was given a database of 3,000 clients, and I, my job was to set up a skin clinic for another doctor. And I decided on that day, I don't remember where the thought came from, but that I was going to give away a birthday treatment. And I went to that superior and I said, I want to give out, I'm going to send out an email and I'm going to give every single person a birthday treatment. And it ended up being about 200 names a month. Over time now in my own database, we have about 6,000 names that we manage. 
about 35 employees, and we still, 10 years later, give out the birthday treatment. And so every client gets a free birthday treatment, and it's something small, but it just kind of reminded me about your box. That was my story is the birthday treatment. Um, and then I also do want to just go back really quick and say, the only place that I've put out paper ads has been in like little small, um, more like little catalogs that go out for football with schools. Those little tiny pieces of paper that cost like $50, you can't imagine how much support it has brought. Because you're at a football game and you're flipping through and you know that you did it to support the team, not necessarily to grow your business. But in turn, it grows your business. You know, I think when choosing to uh, use your advertising dollars, it's all personal, right? And so, um, uh, as a business owner, I might be considered maybe a little bit young um, in my early 30s. And so, as a young guy, I don't use Yellow Pages, so I'm not likely to advertise there. The reason that I think Matt mentioned Community Impact, it's a small newspaper within the community here, and they have about five locations in Austin. I read it cover to cover, and I think most people that I know read it cover to cover. So I read it, therefore I think other people do. Yelp, I use Yelp, therefore that's where I'm going to put my advertising dollars. So I think a lot of it is I'm going to steer away from things that I don't personally use. Um, and so it's a very personal thing for me in terms of why I ended up advertising with Yelp. Honestly, I liked the girl that called me. Um, I didn't feel like she was patronizing me. I'm married, three children. She was just friendly. Um, she didn't patronize me. She didn't give me the whole bit about, hey, you know, how much is the average move? Okay, so if we gave you this many more customers, do you not want more business? I'm like, listen, I'm, I'm not stupid. Okay, yes, I want more business. I feel patronized right now. And that's the way a lot of the sales calls come across. You know what? Honestly, the Yelp call, I just liked the person that was calling me. We ended up talking about college football, which I'm a huge fan of. And that led to me writing a check to them every, week, uh, every month, excuse me. And I think a lot of that is just connecting. It's the same way when I go in someone's living room to sell them a move, I'm gonna find a way to connect. And that's what really sold me and the one things I honestly buy in terms of advertising, it's because I connect and I have a gut feeling and my in intuition tells me it's gonna work. Matt, before you go, sure. um, how many sales calls are you each fielding per week, would you say? Uh, just really quickly before we go to Matt. Um, that reminded me of kind of, I think that challenge has grown with uh, group buying and a lot of other things. It's, you know, we always ask small businesses what, How is, many is sales it a, calls are, we are you getting bombarded by the Yellow Pages newspapers, Groupon, in terms of, you know, selling you stuff for, for your local 30 to 40 maybe? 30 to 40 a week? I'd say easily a wow. week. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Mine are so well filtered, I don't know. I don't <laughs> right, allow sure. them to come to me. Uh, <laughs> so. no, I have mine, mine filtered as well, too. I okay. don't even listen to them. I don't mean to sidetrack things, Matt. No, 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 it's no, just, no it can right. suck up a lot of time yeah. in a day. And as an in-business person, you don't have time. You know, you've really got to stick to it. The yeah. other thing, too, is um, I have had just an amazing relationship with Living Social. And like before, I have been able to negotiate better deals. And I also have this wonderful person from Groupon calling me. But my heart, when I first decided that I would kind of look into that media, I wasn't big enough for Groupon. And oh. Living Social took me on. And now I'm a top whatever producer that is with Living Social. We sell out 400 deals in a day or something. Um, and Groupon is being very nice to me and they're doing everything they can to try to get me over. But I just can't help the loyalty. You know, I can't forget yeah. the loyalty that, you know, that I have with Living Social. And it, bothers me. Of, I wonder what my client is going to think that I'm just dropping on every single deal in town. And so, mm -hmm. whatever that's worth. So Matt Darnell's question about investment criteria. Yeah, I'm very conservative with that. I'm still a, a new business owner and I'm trying to figure that out. Um, I, I like to study my competition and do the opposite. You know, so I like to go bold. When my vans drive around, there's a big piece frog. Um, we really stand out. Um, there's one of my, comp my, my competitors around town. He's rumored to spend between thirty and forty thousand dollars a month on ads. That means he's in everything. He's in um, community impact. He's in Valpac. He's everywhere. And he probably has you know thirteen or so vans going out full time. He's advertising to be the very l lowest price company out there. And I want to do the opposite of that. Um, I am so I'm very cautious of, of what I spend my my advertising dollars on. Um, interested in in you know ranking well on Google like everybody else is, and that's the real real challenge. And even that, um, 
I've uh, experienced a lot of, of bad SEO companies out there and I'm pretty jaded with that as well too. Um, so I, I found, not to get off topic a lot, but whenever an SEO company found out I didn't know what SEO meant exactly, um, then um, I w was overcharged and it wasn't as effective a as I would hope it'd be. But That's the black hat SEO as we call yeah. it in the industry, giving you know, all the SEO practitioners a bad name. Sure. Um, so um, I'll ask another quick question to you guys. I've been impressed with um, your reviews volume and also high ratings. I mean we're talking about three people here with you know, five or very close to five and we're talking about a three digit volume of ratings and that's extremely hard to do of course. So um, how are you, you know, now that you have an established Yelp presence, doing more to leverage that to get people to go to your Yelp page and to review? I mean one of the classic examples is anyone with a storefront has the decal, you know, like us on Yelp but, you know, sometimes it's challenging. If you're a restaurant, you know, as a consumer you might go out to dinner four or five times a month but the infrequency of a business that if, you know, if you're a plumber, I hope you're not calling your plumber three or four times a month or moving for example. I mean it's happening less and less often uh, for any given person. So what are you guys doing to uh, drive people to your page and generate reviews? Uh, you know, how have you gotten, you know, the hundred or so reviews that you've gotten weighed with a five star uh, rating? Well, people move uh, once every 5.4 years. Right. So we got one shot, right? It's not like they're going to come back in for another scoop of ice cream next week. So uh, one thing we do is we, we the, the number one thing is we try to recruit, train and retain the best people, right? Everybody tries to do that. Um, that is absolutely first and foremost. Um, we really believe from the time they call our office and I require every single person that answers the phone, hi, my name is so and so, you've reached Square Cow, how may I serve you? And so we really push the word serve, not customer service, how can I serve you? It's in our writing, it's in everything. I think one thing that's been huge for us in terms of uh, maybe deterring people from leaving bad reviews, we send a, a survey out to every client the day after their move. Um, and it's 10 questions, guys. It's really simple. It takes people about 30 seconds. It's a scale of one to five. One is a cow patty, five is a cow bell, right? <laughs> Were we punctual? Cow patty, cow bell. Where did we fall? Okay? So it takes people about 10, uh, 30 seconds, three minutes to fill this thing out. And here's the thing that I've found. Since we started this survey, people just want to be heard. And so whether that's at Yelp or whether it's at Angie's List or whatever, if they just get it out, a lot of times they're less angry and they, they're less likely to move on to the next step, which might be Yelp or Angie's List or whatever. And so we give them that avenue. We give them that opportunity to let it out. If you're frustrated about something, I want to cut them off at the pass. Before your internet gets set back up, before AT&T makes it to your house, or before your computer gets set back up after the move, I want to cut you off of the pass. I want to give you the opportunity to say we, maybe you're upset, you didn't do a good job and let me respond before they jump on to Yelp or Angie's List and that's been huge for us in maintaining uh, five stars. Obviously we're always drop, you know, uh, rolling a TV down someone's driveway away from a really bad experience. So uh, that's something that we really attempt to, to cut off at the past it, when those things happen. And also not to, to derail the other two from answer, but you know, Wade, I think you have an interesting philosophy too. If you actually receive a negative review once it gets to that point, how do you respond in those situations? Well, I mean, we respond directly, first of all. I don't, I don't get on Yelp and do this public announcement. Um, a lot of times, honestly, we call them. We say, if we missed it, guys, the first thing we do is say, hey, Mrs. Smith, man, it looks like we missed it here and we missed it big time. What can we do at this point to, to, to make things right with you? And we want to change your opinion about our company. Um, and so we go at it very directly. And if they left that review at, uh, at 10 a.m., literally, you know, by that afternoon they've heard from us to some degree. And there's some people that just aren't going to be approachable. There is no making it right. And for those people we say, hey, if, that, if we get to that point where you want to open up dialogue about this, Here's my number. It's per my personal cell phone number to the owner of the company. I'll welcome you calling me personally anytime, day or night. That's how we deal with it. We've had a lot of success um, doing it that way and uh, hopefully we can keep doing it that way. I, I've been very lucky as well too. I call them directly myself. But one thing I, I think I feel, I mean, there, you obviously are going to have some crazy reviews that aren't, there isn't anything you can do to fix it no matter how, to, how many times you've called them or what you wrote or said. Um, but I, I feel like I have messages up throughout my business that says, 
I am Ann Webb. I am here. This is my cell phone number. I would love to hear your review first. Please give me the opportunity to make it better. And at that point, if I haven't, by all means, say whatever you need to say. And it's really about cutting it off as quickly as possible in the beginning because they're emotional and they're mad and they want to be heard. And if I am willing to listen to them at this point, usually I can just about fix anything. And I also, um, you know, I leave public reviews because I think people want to hear a voice. They're reading the review and it doesn't sound great. But a lot of times in my own voice, someone will say, I'll, I'll get a three-star review that says, someone didn't burn me enough. And then the next review says, someone burned me too much. And I can go into those two different reviews and explain you know, why we do things the way we do. And it also lets the rest of the public understand our mission statement. I can take a bad review and make it look so great in our eyes because other people are now reading the mission statement. And people tell me all the time, I love reading your three-star reviews. They're so much better than the five stars. So, um, so that's definitely something you know, that we've done is hitting it early. Matt, anything to add on that? Yeah, um, I kind of do all of the above. We have a, everybody has the iPad in the field. And so when mm. the, the job is done, um, the customer is required to fill out a little survey, basically so I, I know um, what the technician does. Um, and so if there's any problems, um, hopefully we'll correct it right then. Our company does follow-up up calls, too, on, on every, every single customer that we go to. If there are any issues that have to be dealt with um, responding online, now is kind of fun. Um, most people don't read all those, those five stars. They just skim down and look at the, the worst ones. Sure. And so responding to those in an intelligent and a humorous way, uh, hopefully, um, will get us business. So before we go on, we're right at 4.30. Um, we're going to keep talking to these guys for a little bit longer. The session that comes next, the demo session, we had the benefit of a little bit of uh, free time there. So we want to have the benefit of these guys on stage and keep asking the questions. But I will say that the concurrent session, the women leading and local, is going to start on time. And that's getting going right now. If anyone um, is planning on going to that, um, it's women only, so that's probably only about half of you. Um, and anyone's welcome. Um, if you are a woman, there's no registration, pre-registration, or inv invitation needed. Uh, please feel free to go over to that. Um, we're going to go into our next demo session again in a few minutes, but I want to you know, have the, the great benefit of um, these guys' voices on stage to keep going. Um, and, and I'll ask you guys briefly, based on some of the things you just said, one thing I thought of is, what are the types of leads that you're most interested in, either on Yelp or elsewhere? Do you want the phone to ring? Is it online appointment scheduling? Is it, you know, how, how are the ways that you're acquiring business and what are the things that you really want to see happen that you're discerning ROI from? I love the fact that Yelp uh, does a great job when people will put in you know, movers in Austin or whatever, uh, a lot of times my reviews will come up first. And so they'll go ahead and see five stars in the search listing and they'll see kind of blurbs of our Yelp reviews. I think that's fantastic. Um, you mentioned uh, you know, people love us on Yelp decals. Mm -hmm. Well, for Matt and I, people aren't coming to my office, uh, yeah. especially happy customers. <laughs> uh, so uh, you know, it would be great if there was some kind of auto decal. I know, Del Darnell, that's something we've discussed in the past that we could put on our trucks that uh, honestly will push people toward Yelp as they're sitting behind our big truck in traffic and they see that we're active in Yelp. So, uh, I think that's probably coming, but it hasn't come out yet. And so we have a decal in our office, and all five of my managers see it every day, and they already know they love us on Yelp, so that doesn't really do us a lot of good. I, um, I can tell you, I can't necessarily break down all the great things Yelp has done for us, but I feel like for the amount of money they charge and what they promise, they do a fine job, that is for sure. I haven't ever felt like I paid a certain amount of money and then I search for my name and I'm not there. Or it doesn't pop up at the top. or They just seem to have figured out a lot of those pieces. And that's probably your job to answer those questions. But I, I've been very impressed and I'm not a big advertiser. I'm all about people. So I've, you know, I've been very happy. Darnell, you think it's a good idea to talk briefly about Yelp's pricing structure for small businesses? Because it's, it's the simplicity of it, I think, is an appeal for time-starved SMBs uh, before you go into your next question. Sure. So um, 
you know, we have a few different options for uh, small business owners. I think sort of the, the main uh, bread and butter that a lot of people do is kind of the CPM model. Um, and it's, it's usually an annual contract and it really just depends on how aggressive people want to go. We've got some folks that spend up to $1,000 a month down to $300 a month. Um, they also get paid upgrades in addition to the search ads. So both these guys actually have videos. Uh, up on their listing as well, which can help conversion. I know Matt's we're going to see Matt in a minute. It's got a pretty quirky video on his Yelp page, um, and then we do also have a, a, a CPC um, um, auction price based model as well um, that's available. Um, but beyond that, I, I think really kind of for us too, the, the the goal is again to help consumers close the loop and also to provide businesses with as many opportunities as possible to get in front of their customers. So aside from sort of the traditional advertising, you've got folks like Wade who have a call to action uh, button on his on his Yelp listing, so you can actually book an appointment uh, with Wade directly through his Yelp page. That's a, a new feature that we rolled out. Um, we've also got Yelp deals. I, I, I know you're uh, or you were running Yelp deals as I well, am. so people I'm can actually make running. purchases directly from the Yelp listing and on mobile. Um, but you know, just kind of back to, to to his question, and maybe to phrase it another way, how are, how are you all? Um, whether it's you know Yelp or any of the other sort of platforms that you're on, how how do you track ROI? With, with me, for Yelp, it's just easy. I mean, I pay $300 a month, and last month we, we booked um, 154 customers just off of Yelp. And I know what the average, um, what our average ticket is, so that's how I track it. I mean, it's, it's, for me, it's money well spent. I use an online software called MindBody Online. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's God, it's revolutionized my business, I feel, because it tracks everything for you. And you just plug in, you plug in Yelp, and every month I print out exactly a number that shows me how many people came from Yelp. And then you obviously you have your platform as well, so that's very helpful. Um, and then in terms of like, I don't do a survey, but it sends out an email when they leave that says, hey, how did you like your service? Is there anything we can fix? And we can tailor that, and I really like that a lot because it's a message from me. It has a couple of misspellings in it, and no, I'm joking. Um, but so I see anybody who has had a complaint that day, it's sent directly to my email if they don't feel like calling me. So, so I use that software. I answer that question. We track everything. Every call that comes in, they our, our guys can't move from one screen to the next without asking, "How'd you hear about us?" What we what we're finding is we're finding multiple contacts. It was. Hey, you know what? My neighbor told me about you guys, and then I looked you up on, on, on Yelp or on the internet. Hey, I saw your truck, and then I saw, saw your Yelp reviews. So it's getting, it's getting all this stuff stacks up on top of each other, right? So I'm, tell, I'm spending an ungodly amount of money on SEO every month, or what I consider to be. And so um, I'll ask people how they heard about us, and they'll say, Google, Annalette read your Yelp reviews. Well, all that stuff kind of works together, right? You guys know better than I do. Um, and so it's getting, it gets a little gray on exactly, I don't know if they went straight to Yelp or whether they found us through a search engine or something like that. Um, all I know is that uh, we get, that's the predominantly, it's either Yelp or it's Google or it's a customer referral, which is, which is the greatest of all. So um, that's how we track it, but everything is tracked, every single call. Nice. So we have to wrap soon, but uh, Darnell, I'll give you the last word or a last question you want to ask these guys uh, before, we, before we wrap and watch uh, Matt's great video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I just open-ended, if you have any sort of uh, parting thoughts about kind of your overall digital marketing strategy, feel free to share that with the audience. What I would say is um, Yelp is, is leverage, right? It's a crowbar. So do I believe that we would have grown without Yelp? Yes, I do. Um, for 16 trucks right now, I think we'd probably be at eight trucks without Yelp, uh, Angie's List. So I think back in the day, you know, 10, 15 years ago, what'd you always hear? You heard, hey, if you had a great experience, you're gonna tell 10 people. You know, if you had a bad experience, you tell how many. Um, now, if you had a great experience, you're about to tell 100,000 people. And so it's just a crowbar. And when I tell small businesses, when I do things like this, um, I just say, you better be offering good service. You better be coupling Yelp with absolute best top quality service because if you're not someone else is and you're going to be irrelevant really fast because it's no longer telling your neighbors and your coworkers, people you go to church with now it's telling everybody and so um it's a it is a uh, it's a blessing it's a curse how are you going to use it is kind of the question and so that's what would be my parting thoughts yeah i i agree with matt 100 percent. you can't advertise on yelp 
and not have your internal pieces figured out. My first Yelp review was a one-star review that said, this, these people are the most rude people I've ever come across in my life. I can't believe she's still in business. I still have nightmares over that review. <laughs> it humbled me. It made me look at my staff that had the most amazing face when I was in the building. And I let three people go that week and I've never lost sight of what, what that really means. And um, obviously we've been able to correct that. But um, you have to have all those pieces in a row. You pay the advertising dollars, but what happens on a daily basis and what that response is when that phone call is made is everything. Yeah, I just hope Yelp stays around for a long time because without Yelp, I would be a one-man operation in a van cleaning carpets all day, a van down by the river. I, I just am so glad that I can be here, you know, instead of having to be in the field all day long. So, all right, thank you. All right. Well, thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to be here. Really appreciate it. Join me in thanking the panel. We will. Um, as these guys are walking off the stage, we're going to watch Matt's video. If you look closely, it's actually Matt in the video. Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Congratulations. You have found Austin's best carpet cleaning company on Yelp. As you can see by our customer reviews, Yelpers love us. We offer deep steam carpet cleaning, tile and grout cleaning, upholstery cleaning, dryer vent cleaning, and expert carpet repairs. Our extraordinary attention to detail and friendly technicians make Peace Frogs stand out above the rest. We're also the only company that offers a 200% peace of mind promise. Call and ask about our special Yelp discount and multiple service discounts. Hey, give us your business. You'll be glad you did. Thanks for sticking with us a little bit longer. Right now what we're going to do is go right into our, our demo sessions and there's going to be kind of a quick stage refresh here. Um, and while we're doing that, I figure we have three or four minutes I was going to talk about my, my paper I just put out on mobile payments. Um, and essentially, you know, we at BI Kelsey put out a lot of research, we put out a lot of editorial, um, and this is basically a white paper on the emerging area of mobile payments. The last paper I did was on mobile advertising and what's happening with mobile ad targeting. This really takes the next step down the purchase funnel um, where, you know, demand generation has been fulfilled. Now how do you kind of engage customers when they're in consideration phases all the way down to the actual, um, uh, conversion itself at, at the point of sale. So, you know, and, and once that data is aggregated, how do you kind of close the loop and kind of feed that back into the, the front end of the, the marketing uh, process? So, um, if anyone is interested in this paper, please email me, mboland at biakelsey.com. Um, it's about a 40 page paper, lots of best practices, lots of competing standards right now in mobile payments. You have NFC, which is hampered by a lot of challenges with you know, technical implementation and chicken and egg challenges. And then you have mobile card readers like Square. So we have a lot of case studies about what's working for small businesses, what's not working, and really how it's panning out at these uh, kind of early stages.